course. Um, so yeah, so that, that's what we're expecting. Uh, okay, we move on to the brutal um, boodles. Uh, we've got three official selections for this. I'll, I'll kick off with your stat again, Matt, if I can, because I know you, you're putting nothing up as yet. That's right. Yeah, the stat is that horses that began in French national hunt races are 7 from 79, 61% profit back in those. And that's about precocity, the advantage in a big field juvenile handicap hurdle of having started hurdling early. French three-year-old hurdle season began earlier this week. Gaspara, Colando and Flying Tiger had all run over hurdles in France the previous season. Flying Tiger wasn't even a novice. And horses learn over a period of time, not just from race course experience. I think effectively being second season hurdlers is a big plus here in terms of being battle hardened. A cynic might also argue that putting French hurdles form in front of the BHA handicappers makes it harder for them to assess the British or Irish form. Only Diego de Charmy was, um, has won having had all his runs in France. So I, I'm sitting this out. But if you buy into the theory behind this trend, then risk bail looks a likely tight. All right, you have got a, a horse um, who began, who had one race in, in France, DC, a Gordon Elliott runner. Yeah, I like this is insanely hard. And I had a, had a look down long, and um, the one that kind of caught my eye was, was, was Jazzy Matty. I think he's um, he's he's going to be about uh, 26.0 again. He started out the season behind, um, he finished behind Comfort Zone in, in, a, in November in a, a three-year-old um, maiden hurdle in, in Navin. And he powered up the hill, but he was being bothered by a loose horse at times in it. Um, still kept going, and I mean, he finished ahead of Takao that, that day. Now, that, that might, he might have been written to his, his Maris that day, but he, he, he won after that. He said a go off Blood Destiny um, in, in Fairy House again. He, he finished a good bit this and that. And then he ran in that, that race at Nace there. And um, I can't think of the name there. I'm just getting that up there now. The, the one that's thrown up the winner the last three years. He finished fourth in that. Though he went off favour for that. He was beaten by Sir Allen, who came home, absolutely flying home. And Biker was ahead of him as well. But he tried to make all in that race. And he was just, he was just I think, caught short probably in the last, last two furlongs. He still stayed on. Um, that was over over just under two miles. Like he's a massive price. Gordon Elliott has won this now with um the likes of Veneer Char Veneer Charm, you know, big big price ones. I don't think you want to be looking in this kind of race. You want to be back at something at a double figure price. I mean, there's there's been a, a fair few shocks in it, like, and this is going to be a race with, with big place concessions in, in all the books. We're, we'll be going to at least seven places on this. So um I'm going to probably play Jazzy Matty with a small win bet and then back him for you know, four, five, and six places as well. Um, there could have been a few more I put up as well, but uh, he he's the he's the main one. Yeah, my way of this always used to be to to back the 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 couple of outsiders of big yards in in Ireland. Um, so he he could be on the list. I just wonder whether he's actually quick enough. Um, but again, he's a big old price. So there you are, Steve. Yeah, it's more passing on information, really. Um, I went to see Ben Pauling the other day, and he's got a horse called Bad in there who uh, hasn't run in Britain yet, ran three times in France, so it's good to hear Matt's stat. And uh, he was very impressive at Bordeaux back in November. He'd, he's only run at Bordeaux, funny enough, and uh, he was an early starter, as they are in France. He, was, he, he ran on April Fool's Day last year so he's been uh jamming and ben said that he would he thought he'd be very competitive in a triumph hurdle and he thinks the british handicap has made a mistake he's been very well backed so that's uh as good as uh good as i forgot really so bad in ben pauling's yard's been in superb form all season uh since he moved so yeah that's just passing on information really did he uh, say anything about samuel spade because i think he's got him as well he's got decent form with perseus way so, I mean, he, he would be did. a benchmark for him. Yeah, he probably did. I don't know what it was. But... <laughs> it wasn't as eye-catching as what he said about Bad anyway, which is a note. That's what he said. He said, to, I mean, to be fair, Bad was 33 to 1 at this point, and he said, you want to be back in Bad for the Beatles? And I said, oh, yeah, sounds like a good idea. And he said, um, he said, yeah, uh, he, he thought he'd made a mistake. He was expecting £10 more, and he said he would be competitive in the Triumph Hurdle, in his opinion. And interesting enough, um, Luca Morgan's already jocked up on. Uh... Uh, I think Rachel Blackmore rides it. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I came out today. Yeah, on Samuel Spade. Ah, uh, okay. 
Sorry. You know, feel, feel free to interrupt me. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Do you jump so in with me? I wish someone had interrupted you when you were giving out non-runners that weren't. But... <laughs> Just to save um, your face, Tommy. Who else have we got then? Have we, have we done... Oh, no, Dan. Sorry. Go on. Yeah, the the one Matt gave a favourable mention to uh, when he was reading out his in Risk Bell. I actually really like her for this. I know it's a competitive race, but I think she's got a lot more to come. And I think she'd be definitely better than Mark 127 in time. Obviously won a couple of times over in France, has been thrown in the deep end in her starts over in Ireland, travelled notably well on her Irish debut behind uh, behind Lossie Mouth, just weak and late on that day, looked like she'd come on for it, and then given a very, very patient ride in the ninth rank, again, behind Lossie Mouth, right <coughs> out the back, could be caught staying on a long way from home that day, never really put in the race, and then notably gambled upon in the always competitive mayor's handicap at the Dublin Racing Festival, went off five to two for that race. And for a four-year-old to go off five to two for that, considering it's normally a very deep event, I think speaks volumes of the fact they think she's well ahead of her mark. She did fall mid-race, which isn't ideal, but Mrs. Milner also took a pretty heavy fall during that race and then went on to win the Potemps a few years ago. So there is precedent for coming back from that. If she is over that, I think she's still on a very generous mark, 127. The British handicap has only put her up four pounds. There's a lot to like about her profile. And with Willie Mullins having such a strong hand in the, in the juvenile division, I know he hasn't won the, the Boodles yet, but it seems only a matter of time. And I think he knows exactly where they are with these juveniles. And I think she's well handicapped. Uh, the Boodles and the Champion Chase must be the, the only two races he hasn't won. So there you are. There are uh, all, a lot of handicap chases. They're not his bag uh, either. But... The altar, would he? Yeah. Fair enough. All right. Um, have we got one more to 